Good morning, everybody. You're listening to the Total Bases Podcast. Uh, it's good to hear from you all. As always, I'm here with my co-host. Uh, we'll go from left to right. Sean Connor Flannery is here. Sean, how are you doing this morning? I am awesome. I've been up for like over two hours now. Uh, today is draft day in the Baseball Life Home League. Uh, one pick is already in. Our good friend Jet Dry is on the clock. Uh, of course, he was the Cinderella year one but he turned back into a pumpkin in year two and now he's got the number two pick in year three. So I'm super excited. This is like the best day of the year. What was the first pick? uh, uh, Mario gets, uh, well, we'll get to in just a little bit. I want to, I want to build it up a little bit here, but uh, go ahead. And then I've got, uh, he's already spoken, got Felipe (laughs) Malicio with me today. Felipe, how you doing? Uh, I've also been up for two hours, but not for the same reason that uh, Sean probably is as uh, I woke up this morning and my baby was, right on top of me sleeping like on top of me so i think she now realizes when the weekend starts and and is is, is going on because she's been doing that a lot lately where she uh makes a big fuss about um wanting to be in bed with us as opposed to being on her crib so i think we're at that stage where she realizes oh wait a minute you guys don't have to work the next day screw you i'm gonna <laughs> Uh, slumber party Fortnite, whatever so that was weird but you know uh I'm not crushing her, so that's that's all you can ask as a parent is <laughs> you're not crushing the baby. Uh, so as you heard from Sean, uh, Felipe and Sean will be pulling double duty today as we are going to be doing the podcast while they uh, while they monitor the draft of the Baseball Life uh, Fantasy League. So uh, if there's any updates on picks, I'm sure they will uh, do that live and <laughs> we can roast them. So speaking of picks, uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about um, – keepers so we're going to talk about uh, the keepers from the baseball life fantasy league which the draft is currently going on we will also be talking about the keepers from the mardi gras fantasy league that felipe and i are a part of and um, our goal today is to roast as many people as possible and hurt as many feelings as humanly possible <laughs> damn right so- <laughs> damn right and, and i also got to remember to uh tag everybody that we talk about so yeah. <laughs> oh, sure we, they, we, we don't just want to roast them we today. we want to let them know Hey, you're getting roasted. <laughs> you're getting burned alive to a crisp. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to make you cry. All yeah. right. So, uh, the, uh, but before we get into the fantasy uh, aspect of our show, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, there's actual transactions going on. Baseball is finally fully back. There are signings that are um, coming to fruition. Teams are, or teams are starting to sign people, trade people, and there are some Weird acquisitions out there. Um, <laughs> Dong, Dong City covered uh, a few of them, and uh, we're going to be covering the transactions from the 17th uh, to the 20th, which I believe is today. today. Yeah, today is yep. the 20th, um, because we had a big signing early in the morning that I didn't know about until I woke up about an hour ago. Um, so that'll be fun. But first, let's start on the uh, 17th. So I'm going to go through the list of the acquisitions that happen on the 17th. And uh, we can talk about one or two um, each that we think are going to be important and why they are important or why it's a bad signing. So let's let's get started with uh, on March 17th, uh, relief pitcher, starting pitcher, Garrett Richards agreed to a one year contract with with the Texas Rangers. Uh, Brad Miller also agreed to a two-year contract with the Texas Rangers. Uh, let's see. Corey Dickerson agreed to a one-year contract with the Cardinals. Matthew Boyd goes to the Giants. Uh, let's see. Danny Duffy goes to the Dodgers. Archie Bradley goes to the <laughs> Angels. Uh, but they, I, in my opinion, they made up for it, signing Ryan Tapera to a two-year, to a two-year contract. Um, Colin Moran wants an important pirate agrees to a one-year uh one-year contract to the if, reds if there ever was a thing called uh, such as an important pirate <laughs> i don't think there's been an important pirate in 40 years i'm sorry andrew mccutcheon <laughs> i, I kind of glossed over you there but that's well, there's always just black the, beard yeah it, it's just the truth <laughs> and then uh the cubs made a bunch of signings a bunch of minor league contracts the two to talk about is they signed relief pitcher michael givens to a one-year contract then they signed Jonathan VR to a one-year contract. So Felipe, you want to start, which one of those do you want to talk about? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the Cubs uh, signing all those um, 
uh, relief pitchers or all those, uh, uh, you know, Michael Givens. But yeah, since those uh, moves were made, all of a sudden they look a lot better now. Their bullpen does because at the beginning, I think I talked to you about it in private or who, who the hell was I talking about the Cubs <laughs> bullpen being awful. And all of a sudden they look pretty darn good. I think they, uh, let me see, where were we here? They got uh, Daniel Norris, who, you know, former highly touted prospect from the Blue Jays mm-hmm. and with the Tigers. Uh, now he's there to shore up the bullpen and make it somewhat respectable. Michael Givens, who's been around for a while. Uh, I thought I saw that they also signed David Robertson. Is that, that I dreamed that? No, yeah, they did sign David Robertson. So, uh, so and then Robert Gesselman, uh, that's uh, Sean's. Uh, yeah, the G- Gesellman, he's a good multi-inning guy. Um, yeah. The issue with him is he always got burnt out early in the year. They would just mm-hmm. ride him so hard. And then yeah. by the time June, July came around, his velo was down. But uh, he's a good little uh, relief pitcher swing man. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, it, it's a lot better than what they had at the beginning when uh, Austin and I were doing the uh, uh, the rosters for our, for our fantasy stuff. It, it looks much better because, <laughs> yeah. And, I and feel like, um, go ahead. You, you, Michael Givens could be like one of those sneaky, like the first two and a half months of the season, like saves God. Like if, if you draft him, you hell, you don't even probably have to draft him at this point. You know, pick him up on your first week of waivers or in the very last round. Um, but I feel like he could get like five to 12, 15 saves in the first couple months, maybe. Yeah, because uh, I believe uh, Brad Wick, I, and I always confuse it. I, I don't even remember who was supposed to be the guy getting the, the, the saves. Was it Rowan Wick or Brad I, I think, Wick? I saw a tweet about Rowan Wick throwing a curveball to say a Suzuki today, and uh, it was very nice looking. Suzuki swung in a miss. Oh, wait, I, I wrote it down somewhere. Bear with me. I, I have it here somewhere. Hold on, hold on. Uh, so who was supposed to be the Cubs? Oh, Rowan Wick. Okay, so Rowan Wick yeah. stays, but Brad Wick I had as my second guy uh, who was supposed to maybe vulture some saves and maybe even be better than Rowan Wick. But Brad Wick got hurt with, uh, what's it, uh, Tommy John, was it? Or I don't know, he got hurt. But now the bullpen looks a lot better, so maybe Cub fans uh, can take solace that we have a solid third-place team. We, we got that stranglehold on third place in that NL Central, so... Good for them. Uh, also, uh, speaking of Cubs players, uh, ex-Cub, uh, Austin, why don't you talk about how excited you are about getting Ryan Tapera on your team? Uh, you know what? I actually like the Tapera signing for the Angels. Uh, when you look at the Angels, they've actually done – you know, I always bash the Angels every year, it seems like, because <laughs> I'm like, we need pitching, but yet you don't go get pitching. Like, what is going on with the pitching? But when you look at the – bullpen anyway the bullpen is 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 pretty decent so i mean you have rice Iglesias gonna gonna close for you and ryan tapera slides into the eighth inning setup man which pushes mike mayers who's actually done pretty decently since he's been on the angels um as a seventh inning setup man mm-hmm. and that pushes aaron loop out into middle middle relief and um when we did the uh when we did the selections at the end of last season for you know top you know, relief pitchers, um, you know, all of the uh, baseball life hosted all of the, um, what do you want to call it? The selections for the best uh, at every position. Uh, when we got to relief pitchers, I had Aaron loop as one of my top five. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was, I'm pretty happy to see that we're getting some lefties in the bullpen. Um, you know, I'm not as excited about Archie Bradley, but you know, Ryan Tapera, that back end of the bullpen has looked a lot better. Now the key is we have to get there with the win and <laughs> with the starting pitching, <laughs> yeah, with, with the starting pitching. And right now we have Otani, which who I'm still kind of leery with all of the, you know, double workload. He's got to do this is, this will be the second year in a row that he's actually pulling a double workload. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if. He can, if he can pull it, he's projected to pitch 156 innings this year. I don't know if he's going to get 156 innings. I hope he does because he's listed as our ace, which again, I'm not excited about, um, you know, then you got Cindergard, who is a huge wild card. I have no idea what to expect from Cindergard. Hopefully you get the Cindergard of old, but I'm not keeping my hopes up. Um, and then after that, it's just a it's just a mess. You got Patrick Sandoval, who hey, I, I'm a huge fan of Sandoval. I'm you know what? Sandoval's Sandoval. got he, Sandoval's got good breaking stuff, but he just he can never he can never put it together. He you know he has two or three starts where he's great, and then he has two or three starts where he's terrible. Yeah. Um, cool. And then you get and then you have Michael Lorenzen, Jose Suarez, 
and Jaime Berea. Roster Resource has them as at a six-man rotation right now. Yeah, I, would, yeah. I, I, I could see them doing that with Otani and Syndergaard both being on innings limits. Yeah, definitely, for sure. And then hopefully, um, let's see, as the year goes on, you, ha- you have two pitchers in the, um, on the injured list. You have Griffin Canning, um, who went on the IL, 60-day IL with some back discomfort. And then Chris Rodriguez. Has, was supposed to be the young guy coming up that is was supposed to be really good. Um, he had soldier surgery in the off season, still isn't really ready. He's on a 60 day IL. But in terms of the Ryan to Paris uh, signing, I actually like it. I think I think that was a good signing. Um, good good signing for the back end of that bullpen there and get get the win to uh, or get Rice Ellie Glacius a chance for the save. Um, so let's go to Sean. Sean, you haven't yeah, really yeah. had a chance to talk about uh, talk about a yeah, signing. So b- before ahead. we get to these two, the, the the two big ones, which we all know are coming, you know, Correa and of course today Trevor Story. I want us to go back and look on the very first two acquisitions of this list are both Texas Rangers. Did you guys hear the story about who was dropping these? Who got the scoop on it and actually was being credited by guys like John Heyman? It was a random Twitter account called MLB Drops. And he, oh, okay. he had the scoop that both Brad Miller and Garrett Richards, who is finally going to be that elite relief pitcher we've been saying he should be for years. But MLB drops got the scoop. The uh, account is now deleted as it never Ooh. existed. It found out that the son of the new Rangers hitting coach was the one who got that information and was putting it out on Twitter. Oh my God. <laughs> but he had like three days, two days of fame because John Heyman, Ken Rosenthal, all these guys were, you know, adding him saying, Hey, he had it first. And then two days later, the account's gone. <laughs> I just thought yeah. that was a really fun story. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I imagine like some teenager, 18, maybe 18 or 19, like I, I, I'm a dad, who, who are the Rangers getting right now? And then the dad just tells him and a boom out on Twitter. <laughs> Wow. The yeah, system is I'm, alive and well in Major League Baseball. So there I'm excited for Garrett Richards finally getting a, a full time in the bullpen. There's no really bona fide closer. So I'm still holding out hope he could be that elite closer. Uh, let's see. Who do the Rangers have uh, in that bullpen? Uh, this has become another De- De- uh, episode. Demarcus of Evans, uh, Jonathan Hernandez is supposed to be coming back, but probably won't be till May or June. Uh, uh, there's got, interesting pieces. Well, they got Joe Barlow, who's at the top. I, yeah. I have no idea if he's going to be uh, be able to handle that. Uh, that's why when people get excited about the Rangers, I'm like, hey, hold on there, Buckaroo. you got a <laughs> lot of work. This is just phase one of your whatever this is. I don't know. that You can't even call it a real rebuild anymore. Um, but uh, I don't know what the hell they're, what they're trying to do here. I know they're trying to maybe justify the new stadium and trying to get a competitive team out there. But they, you got a long way to go. You still got Spencer Patton, who's okay. Greg Holland, who... We don't know what to expect from him. He's 36 already. Uh, Brett Martin and Garrett Richards in the middle of that bullpen. But like you mentioned, he could be the closer. Um, we, we've always liked this stuff, but he is getting up there in age. Uh, Josh Force Zwors, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but that's a guy I'm kind of keeping an eye on this year as uh, I like his projections for this upcoming season. So some interesting names. and But um, no, you got, I mean, the, the rotation still suspect the bullpen suspect the hitting the lineup is pretty decent it's it's an intriguing list of names but yeah this i don't know where people are getting excited it's a list of names <laughs> the list the list of names I, I mean isn't baseball just a bunch of list of names <laughs> no man you should know better there's connotations and denotations to be made from those guys that's the difference <laughs> um but no man i i, I don't know i thought that I, I didn't realize that there was a lot of uh, uh, love for the Rangers and being a dark horse and maybe even supplanting the Houston Astros. I'm like, no, you're not there yet. <laughs> but but they got Seager and Simeon, and they still <laughs> the rest of the lineup is still trash. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, under, I don't understand the love. I don't, I don't get it. I, I still think, I still think they'll finish at the bottom of the West. Um, I think I, I uh, the A's are gonna try and race them there. <laughs> yeah, but I think I, I honestly think it's the Astros are still the class of the division, and then it'll be um, Mariners. Uh, the the Mariners. Mariners and I, I think the Mariners there. take over this and year. Then it'll honestly. be the Angels um, after that. So. Well, we we uh, we have a show set up for that next week, so oh, we got to make a prediction soon. So uh, 
but yeah, that's uh, that's the 16th. Uh, I'm sorry, that was the 17th. Uh, did you go up to the 18th yet, Austin? Yeah, let's go up to the 18th. So on the 18th of March, it got a little more interesting. Um, uh, former Cardinal Matt Carpenter agrees to a minor league contract with the Texas Rangers. Oh, I have the mighty fallen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke Rayleigh was acquired from the Dodgers uh, to the Rays. Um, so that was interesting. And it looks like, let's see, what was he traded for Tanner Dodson? Yeah. Just, just uh, a random 40 man clearing move. I, I get very much like Hunter Renfro vibes from this deal where yeah. the Rays get Hunter Renfro back. They really didn't give up much in that trade, but, uh, we'll see what Rayleigh does as a Tampa Bay Ray. Yeah, we'll see. And then some of the bigger trades and acquisitions. Here we go. The Padres tr- uh, trade for. Luke uh, trade with the Yankees for Luke Voigt for some dude named Justin Lang, uh, which I was just looking at. He's uh, he's uh, he's a prospect now. And uh, you know, obviously he's a prospect, but last year he spent, he spent 2020 the 2021 season pitching nine starts in the Padres rookie league system. So, you know, that's how much the Yankees value Luke Voigt, I guess. Um, one guy that spent time in rookie ball. Um, and then, uh, the Phillies were very busy acquiring Nick Castellanos to a, uh, signing him to a five-year contract. Uh, let's see. Um, who else? Uh, Delino de Shields agreed to a minor league contract with the, with the Marlins. Tyler Anderson agrees to a one-year contract with the Dodgers. Uh, Michael Pineda agrees to a one-year contract with the Tigers. Wow. Wow. Uh, I missed that one. Yep. And Oops. Kenley Jansen signs a one-year deal with the Braves. Uh, that, that one was kind of a shocker. I, I didn't expect Kenley Jansen to go to the Braves. I thought he was going to have one or two more years with the Dodgers and then, you know, right off into the sunset with right around Kershaw. But uh, I guess the, the Braves, the Braves wanted him. So that, I, I would believe that pushes him out uh, or that pushes Will Smith out of the closers job and into the setup, man. I don't know what roster resource has listed. I, I, I just I, knew drafting Will Smith is a bad idea. When you're not an elite pitcher, you can easily get replaced. And he just got replaced. And I've seen so many people that were drafting Will Smith, like around pick 50, 60. And I'm like, yeah. No, I mean, like he could easily be replaced by someone that was on his own roster. Then, you know, guys like Luke Matzik who had a great year, but then they go out and get Kenley Jansen. And that is why I have always avoided Will Smith, but that's just me taking my little victory parade. Yeah. I mean, uh, I always, I'm a fan of Will Smith, but I'm not a fan of his situation. Not, not, I don't, I don't think he's as bad as Sean makes him to be, I think. (laughs) Well, I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe there was something that he was doing that he was finally caught doing with the sticky stuff situations going on, but uh, I've always liked them. He's always been serviceable, but he's getting up there in age and he's left-handed when you're left-handed and you're uh, at the top of that uh, bullpen, uh, you know, these teams are just looking at you like, Oh yeah, man, if you can only pitch a sixth or seventh inning, that'd be great. And that bullpen stacked. We talked about it. It is a stacked bullpen and it just got stronger. So no, my pick though, is I, I, I want to see what Michael Pineda does for the Detroit Tigers. Cause that's a guy that we, I mean, that's a guy with uh, who's always had the stuff. Just not not the command, and he's getting older, so the stuff's disappearing, and he's never had the command to begin with. And he's right in the middle of that freaking Detroit Tigers uh, uh, starting rotation as the number three guy now. Uh, I guess he supplanted Willie Peralta out of that rotation. So Michael Pineda's uh, it's his number three spot to lose. So we'll see how that goes for him. And the move, I know that people are 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 pissed that uh, uh, teams are now spending money again. So, but the Phillies trying to justify that Bryce Harper big deal by surrounding him with other players. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's what you got to do. If you're, if you're going to build around a very expensive uh, free agent, you got to bring in other guys to help out. Cause before Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos came on his team, this team looked awful, just got awful, but now they look somewhat respectable, still a top heavy lineup as always, but at least it looks much better with Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. Uh, surrounding with uh, Bryce Harper and JT Real Mudo and Reese Hoskins. So. Do you think they misunderstood the instructions when they heard about Universal DH? Because getting both <laughs> Schwarber and Castellanos, did they somehow <laughs> think that like everyone will be a DH? 
<laughs> because th- yeah. that offense is going to be like Rocky's level good at home. Yeah. But good God. I, I mean, Aaron Nola is going to have a four and a half ERA for the rest of his career. <laughs> like, it's all right, man. Oh, Dubal Herrera is there too. Oh, <laughs> oh God. It's center field. Hey, he's actually, I, I didn't realize he's actually been a, a pretty good defensive center fielder, but enough to offset the guys next to him. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate for them. But, hey, you know what? They're trying. So you got to give yeah. them a round of applause for trying. They, they are trying. <laughs> uh, and you can't say that they're wasting away. Uh, you know what? Give the Padres and the Phillies some credit. They are trying to do what they can to build around their, their big free agent signings and Manny Machado and Bryce Harper. Remember that one year when those guys came out in their mid-20s and, like, everybody went crazy on a bidding war and or they tried to lowball them or whatever. And they're still trying. I mean, that's what happens when you sign a free agent like of this caliber is that you got to justify it. So now these teams are trying their best to, you know, compete. So that's what we want to see. It's better than the tankathons that we were seeing in the mid 2010s and stuff. So anyway, that was the, uh, I just saw that, uh, that the, uh, our time was up to talk about, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the acquisitions, but we got the two more dates to go Austin. So let's just quickly go through them uh, really quick. Yeah. Let's go through them really quick. I'll combine uh, the 19th, uh, yeah. the 19th and the 20th. So on the 19th, yeah. uh, let's see on the 19th, let's see. Uh, Carlos Correa signs a no. three year, hundred million dollar contract with the twins for some reason. Um, Jorge Soler signs a three year contract with the uh, Marlins. And then the Cubs did, let's see, the Cubs did a bunch of, bunch of stuff place david boat oh they signed drew smiley to a one-year contract uh um, oh, wow the let's see and then this morning trevor story i mean that, this that morning yeah is trevor story that's pretty much it everything else is a minor league contract so, uh, i loved both correa and stories yeah. honestly I, I think that those were great moves for both of them but jorge soler people are like oh what a great move for miami and i'm like that's no. a dumb move. Oh, like, I mean, I unless I like he, it. is he going to DH? I, I went back and looked. He was the third least valuable qualified position player. The only two beneath him were uh, Miguel Cabrera and Carlos Santana. Those were the only three negative war players that qualified, you know, in terms of plate appearances. And Jorge Soler was one of them. You know what, Sean? You know what this is, Sean? What? The Marlins, you know, the Derek Jeter loved that team, right? Because the Marlins didn't want to spend money, but sneaky Marlins, man, they were just waiting for Jeter to go away. Jeter was holding that team back. I'm sorry, but apparently Jeter really wanted Castellanos. Castellanos signed for a 20 mil, you know, five year deal. Uh-huh. Um, Jorge Soler gets 12 million a year. Uh, why couldn't they just go the extra eight and get uh-huh. Castellanos? Like that, that, that makes no sense to me because it's cheaper this way, but no, hey, listen, man. And that, that is right. That is, that is true. Listen, man, this lineup looks a lot better now than it did before. And again, what, what is the point of this? But you know, I, I hear that. Why, why do teams do this? They're not even going to compete this year. Why do we bother with this? Listen, these are the same baseball fans who get mad when teams don't do anything, when they don't sign free agents, when they don't acquire players. Now that you got this sorry ass Marlins team doing it, people are still pissed off. Look, and with the DH install, you can put Jorge Siller at DH. Or you, they have Marlins have a couple of guys that they can DH and, and play around all over the place. Garrett Cooper suddenly now looks like he's going to get regular playing time because of the DH. And uh, th- we want to see more Garrett Cooper. I want to see more Garrett Cooper. Uh, the only bad thing that happens with this Marlins team is that now it looks like Avisal Garcia is going to be your starting center fielder. Yeah, they, they've been uh, playing. Um, they even had Jesus Sanchez in center field in the spring training game earlier. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, th- this is not going to, like I said, like it's not going to work out. It's it, like, there's too many pieces. They have to trade either Garrett Cooper or Jesus Aguilar. Now I feel like. Yeah, probably Aguilar. If you could get anything for him. I mean, it, 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 but you got to build their Listen, you got to build their, their stock up again. Cause yeah. they're right. They're at the bottom. And maybe Garrett Cooper's a little bit higher than Jesus Aguilar. Jesus Aguilar has been very underwhelming um, since he was with the Brewers. I feel like, um, but you also have a really good starting rotation with the Marlins and you might as well see what you can do. I mean, it's not like yeah. these are, I don't think these are high risk signings. They're, they're okay signings. And they're just, they, they make the Marlins go from a last place team to like a, maybe a third place team and a pesky team. That's going to be a, a thorn on the Mets side. Anyway, they, they've all, they've been so. pesky in the national league. East. They always finish terrible, but the, in the NL East, like the Braves, the nationals, they always played them tough. 
Yeah, so there you go. And the Nationals are going to be trash this year. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I agree. Uh, so yeah, the, and then the Phillies are going to be embarrassed because they get a low level market, not market, sorry, low level uh, payroll team, embarrassing them, uh, 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 and three and four game series all over, uh, all all this year. So, I, I I like what the what some of these major what some of these low level teams are trying to do, especially with Korea and the Twins. That's another one. Why are the Twins doing this? Why not? <laughs> Fuck it. Just go and get something. Do something. You know, you I still think... got fans to get to bring back into the stadium anyway. I know that we make a big deal. Like, well, it's really the TV deals that are the, the core of the financials of, of this teams. But you still got to you bring the fans over. And this is a for for better or for worse. This is a bring the fans back to the stadium move for the Twins, I feel like. Because that's the only way. Because the Twins were set in their infield. And now they solidified it even more. So what is the problem there? I don't understand why people are up and arms. Why are the twins doing this? Why not? Fuck it. Just do it. <laughs> now, now you're gonna compete for second place and maybe even sneak in to a walk card. Uh, you know, because you never know with baseball, things can happen. And it, the twins look a lot better than they did at the beginning of the offseason, that's for sure. So yeah. Uh, so and then what what, what happens? You know, the most the, important oh, twins acquisition, Gary Sonny Gray. Sanchez. Oh, yeah, him too. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of former Yankees not playing with the twins. Sonny Gray, Gary Sanchez. And listen, man, Sonny Gray has done a lot better than since he uh, was dropped from New York. So maybe Gary Sanchez can do the same thing. Although he, from what I've been hearing, he hasn't looked very good so far. Is that the case? or uh, I, I saw like one of, I think, one at bat. I, that, that's all I've seen of him so far in spring. But yeah, check this. But check this infield out. You got Rafael Devers, Xander Bogarts, Trevor Story. And Bobby Dahlbeck for the Red Sox. I mean, that's that's pretty damn solid right there. That's, that's a, pretty yeah. I, I think Trevor Story, uh, Boston was the best place that he could end up. I think he's going to take full advantage of the Green Monster. I don't agree that they're going to play him at second base, but it helps his fantasy value. Absolutely, um, yeah. But it's a good spot, and it seems like he's going to be there long term. The closest opt outs four years. Uh, he'd be, I think, thirty three or thirty four by that time. So I think he's locked in there. Makes me look even smarter that I kept Trevor Story in the Mardi Gras League. And I did go. not in baseball life. Oh, you didn't? Oops. I didn't. Was it because he was a free agent? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that's a great segue because now you know what time it is. It's time to get going. Let's let's talk about this uh, baseball life league here really quick. So let me see if I can share my screen so everybody else at home can see. I'm so uh, excited to be a third-year fantasy player about to roast everybody, all these experienced fantasy players' keepers. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, how's that for Ernie? This <laughs> young whippersnapper over here telling us how to do things. But anyway, <laughs> what you see in front, and I'll go ahead and tag Mario so we can, so he knows that we're talking about him. But what you see in front here is that, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Um, is Mario's team. This is uh, Mario Margola's team. Mario is a friend of the show. Mario has been in, doing this for a very, very long time now. He's, uh, you can go check out his stuff at sportfolio.com or I think it's .com. Anyway, Sportfolio website. Check out his Twitter at Mario Margola. So he has, th these are his hitters. He kept Chris Bryant, Aaron Judge, Mike Trout, and then his two minor league hitters are Jason Dominguez and Helio Rom Ramos. Uh, Austin, since you are very excited, is there anything that stands out for you uh, with these picks that he made here, uh, Chris, uh, I thought Chris, I think Chris Bryan is a very, very good, uh, uh, good keep there, especially now that he's in Colorado. I think Chris yep. Bryant in Colorado is going to be really good fantasy wise. Uh, once I once I learned that he went to uh, Colorado, in my opinion, his fantasy value went up. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, Jason Dominguez, I mean, you hear vince talking about jason dominguez all the time all these yankee prospects that are com coming up he should be uh pretty good judge and trout are obvious keepers um elio ramos is going to be an uh interesting keeper there um i know he was on the spreadsheet that we that we made for um the fantasy rankings and he was projected to play a little bit this year so you know he could be a good little uh Good little acquisition there for the Giants roster that's uh, looking for some a little more flash in the pan offense like they did uh, last year. So I think overall these are some pretty good keepers, uh, good uh, good picks for um, what do you call it um, prospects. So yeah, good job Mario. All right, well that's those are his hitters. Now we move on to the pitchers and uh, let's see. You got Clayton Kershaw. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and do it with the first pick. In the Baseball Life Fantasy <laughs> Baseball League, Mario Mercola selects 
Aaron Eric. Nola, starting pitcher from the Philadelphia Phillies. And uh, he's going to pair him up with Clayton Kershaw oh. and Julio Urias, <laughs> Shane McClanahan. And then on the minors is Davey Garcia, Mackenzie Gore, Brent Honeywell Jr., as you can see on the screen there. Uh, Sean, uh, what, do you, how do you, what do you think of uh, the Aaron Nola pick there? Uh, not my favorite, but solid, you know, floor for a fantasy pitcher. Um, I'm really excited to uh, Mackenzie Gore. Uh, had a terrible yeah. year in terms of his fantasy stock, his prospect stock. Uh, but he's back up around 97, 98, uh, like topping out at 99, sitting about 96 in the, his first couple of spring outings and simulated games and whatnot. So uh, this might be the year Mackenzie Gore finally gets it done. And of course, uh, Brent Honeywell Jr., uh, still prospect eligible. He's in Oakland now after so many years of that screwball and trying to get him up with the Rays, he was offloaded, I believe, last year. Um, and so he's a uh, he got uh, hit pretty hard in his first spring outing, but you know he's still only twenty six years old. <laughs> so that means he's really thirty years old with the inflation and all that. <laughs> twenty six year olds are thirty now. <laughs> All right, let's move on quickly to a Jets team who's on the clock at the moment. It's a slow draft, so it might be a while. So he's suitors for Vila Raptors. That's uh, still the ugliest logo in the league, but it's fine. God. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. I think I think Henry trashed it too the last time here. I didn't realize we had comments. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sleeping on the wheel here. Uh, let's see. Uh, James, uh, th- big thanks to Jacob, James, uh, and Andrew for tuning in tonight or this morning, I should say. James mentioned that Trevor Story reported has an arm issue. Uh, so he's just a course field hitter making $24 million a year. I'm happy that my Yankees didn't get him. So that's a Yankee fans, uh, you know, bashing the Red Sox. Uh, yeah. I was going to say that that seems more like a, a, a spurred fan is just like, no, he didn't come here. I don't want him. We never wanted him to begin with. <laughs> but what, what arm issue is he talking about? I have not heard anything. Oh uh, yeah. He, he, he had an elbow thing that was yeah. kind of affecting yeah. his throws yeah. last year. Oh, well, yeah. that's okay. He's playing second base now. So yeah. Well, Austin, you're a former second baseman. Do you really need your elbow to throw the to first from second? <laughs> you can just underarm everything. Uh, under I mean, armor everything? That's a, that's a sponsor, right? Um, it's going to be a, a bit of a different uh, throwing motion, but he can use a little more of his shoulder, um, you know, and it's less strain on his arm because he doesn't have to throw very far. Um, so, you know, I think I think the move to second base would actually be a smarter decision than, make, than putting him at third, which I believe is – one of the other teams wanted him to play third. Um, mm. I don't remember who, but I was like, third is a terrible decision for Trevor Story. Um, I think I think moving him over to second base will help with whatever elbow issue he has, if he still has it. Um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I think the move to second base is actually a pretty smart idea. And last comment from Andrew saying that Castellanos was just out of Jeter's range and his uh, <laughs> devilish grin over there. As you guys know, Andrew is a Mets fan. So everybody bashing the Yankees today, apparently. So, um, I mean, that, that's a Yankees and a Marlins. <laughs> and a Marlins thing, yeah. It's a Derek Jeter thing. Anyway, this is Jets team. He has a second pick. Uh, he may not get to it anytime soon. I know that people uh, do work on the weekends, unfortunately. But that's why we have a slow drag because it offers so much flexibility. And just a reminder, we have until April 7th to get these done. So Will Smith getting jiggy with it. Sean's favorite catcher of all time, Fernando Tatis Jr., who, uh, same thing that happened to my buddy Matt Bushnell over at the Football Life uh, podcast, The Audible. Uh, he uh, Last week, uh, he kept Fernando Tatis Jr. The next day, we find out that he uh, broke his oh. wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! I don't, that kind of reminded me of Madison Bumgarner a little bit with the uh, whole ATV incident that he well, had. Well, his initial ins- Jeff, his initial Jeff answer, Kent? uh, Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent was both. Well, I mean, Jeff Kent and Bumgarner, I think, were both ATVs or horseback or something. I don't you know, know. It's a California thing. The California players are out, yeah. of, are out of control here. But go but ahead. Did Did you hear Tatis's answer when they asked him about uh, when did you have your accident? And oh, he said, one. "Which one?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh no, that's that's not how you answer that question, Bub. That's not yeah, how you do it. That's <laughs> Fernando Tatis going, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> Oscar <laughs> to Oscar Hernandez, the other keeper, the other hitting keeper for Jet, along oh, with Nolan Jones. He, he, he just put his pick in. Anthony Rendon, number two overall pick in the first round of the baseball life league draft. Nice. To go along with Nolan Jones, who's also going to play third base eventually for the Guardians and O'Neill Cruz, which was the, the big prospect we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. I'm excited for him. Uh, so let me see. So Anthony Rendon now is on that team. So 
uh, wow, he, 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 between shortstop and third base, he either has the, uh, the high risk, high reward thing going, but he does have a safe floor because Nolan Jones and O'Neill Cruz are at the minor leagues. How do you like that plan now there, Sean? Uh, it's, I think it's really nice, especially O'Neill Cruz. I'm not sure if you saw the highlight from yesterday, but he hit a home run that was like straight out of Vlad Guerrero senior. I, yeah. I mean, it oh, was yeah. at his shoelaces and he just got out in front of it and hit it about 370 feet uh, to right field. And I, it just, I'm not sure if he's going to stick at shortstop, but I could ease. I think he's going to be an L rookie of the year. And I think he's going to okay. hit 30 home runs. All right, let's move on to the pitches really quickly. Uh, Chris Bassett, Corbin Burns, Antonio Sensatella, oh, God, and Nick Lodolo. Uh, Austin, I know you're not the pitching guru here, but uh, give me a one sentence about this pitching. Oh, I, I have a one-liner. All right, fine. Um, go ahead, Sean. At least it's at least he has Corbin Burns. There you go. <laughs> that's what I was, was going to say. Uh, I like the Corbin Burns. Um, Chris Bassett. I, I like Chris Bassett. It depends. I don't know how this league is scored, but I like. Uh, you're I like seeing it right there, brother. You're seeing it right there. These are all the stats we use for this league. Uh, K's. Is it a category league? It's a category league. Yeah. Uh, ERA is a little high. Uh, I don't know about the Chris Bassett keep. Um, I think you could have. I don't know who what players he had, but I Doesn't think for matter. this. League, yeah, I don't. I don't think Chris Bassett is a great keep for this. And then Senzatella. Wolf. Uh, Wolf. That's that's all I have to say about that. I think he's uh, Mexican, so that's fine. Sensatella is, I think. So that's eh, fine. With possibly. Him. I think he's and, Mexican. And he's in Colorado. I mean, why why would you keep a Colorado pitcher? Why? You know what's actually really funny with him? I was looking at Sensatella. I think or it was him or Gomber or both. They actually had lower ERAs at Coors Field than they did on the road. I know Austin um, Gomber did for sure. Well, that's even worse. That doesn't justify anything. Get out of here. <laughs> I, it's just, I don't know. I'm just saying it. <laughs> Nick, Lodolo, I, I, Nick Lodolo will be an interesting keep there for his minor league. Um, he's his, he's future valued at a 50. Yeah. He's got a wicked slider. He's got a 70 rated slider um, and pretty good command, 55, 60. So if he comes up for the Reds, he could be an interesting little yeah. acquisition there. He, um, he's for sure coming up this year. He, he had two perfect innings. Uh, I believe on Thursday, uh, struck out four against Cleveland. Uh, but according to Keith Law, Nick Lodolo is not a top 100 prospect. So, uh -oh. um, yeah, so that, got trash for that. Oh, he got hammered. <laughs> there is some uh, when I was uh, doing some of the uh, uh, prospect research along with Austin this offseason, I did see that Lodolo had some, uh, I'm going to call them deficiencies that kind of uh, put him uh, up against the. Uh, you know, the, the wall here in terms of, uh, is this a guy that we can trust? And, uh, yeah, there is some concerns about him. Uh, let me see if I could find that really quick. Cause I did write some little notes on the side here. Uh, Nick Lodolo, Cincinnati Reds, for those who don't know, 24 years old, probably their top prospect at the moment. Well, along with Hunter Green, but I expect Hunter Green to be called up soon. So that kind of graduates him. Uh, Lodolo has a superb slider and command, but only an ordinary fastball. So I think that's part of the problem there is that uh, maybe some of his stuff isn't as good uh, as uh, as advertised at the beginning. So yeah, I some... mean, he, he averaged over 13 and a half K per nine uh, in 2021 between double A AA and triple A. He only did make 50 uh, or pitch 50 innings, made 13 starts. Um, but I actually, I I actually like his profile, though, because it's a high ground ball percentage. Yeah. And if you're going to be in Cincinnati, you got to keep that ball on the ground as much as possible. That was uh, one thing I noticed with these prospects uh, when I was researching these prospects. A lot of them were only pitching anywhere from 30 to 50 innings. They weren't yeah, pitching very much. After the, the COVID year and no pitching in 2020, a lot of these teams were really much kid-gloving uh, their prospects. Yep. We talk about it every single week on this show. It's one of the most frustrating times I've ever had as a fantasy leaguer with starting pitching. So... It, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to uh, James' team. James's team. Uh, James is known as comfortably in first. I don't know if he has to change his name now because the, he's no longer uh, Michael Conforto is no longer a Mets, and this guy is a Mets fan. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, Xander Bogarts, Kristen Yelich, Mookie Betts, and Michael Conforto are 
are the keepers, along with uh, Francisco Alvarez, Marco Luciano, Julio Rodriguez, and Drew Waters. Love the minor leaguers that he has there. Yeah. Uh, but he does have a surplus of hitters. So I have to assume that his pitching's pretty weak. Austin, we'll start with you. Uh, just uh, what stands out with you on the on this keeper list here? Uh, Goldschmidt, I like. Betts, I like. Bogarts, I'm all right with. Yelich, oh, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sold on Yelich because. I don't know. I'm just not sold on Yelich and coming back to something that's super productive that would make him a good keeper. So out of all of those, I think I think I think you could have picked somebody different other than Yelich. Um, Michael Conforto will be a really interesting one. I'm surprised he kept him because he's still a free agent, hasn't signed yet. Um, but Goldschmidt, I really like. Some people might not like Goldschmidt as a keeper. I like gold. I like Goldschmidt as a keeper. I used, or maybe I'm just saying that because I kept him. Uh, but I do like Goldschmidt as a keeper. The one I'm leery of is Yelich and uh, Conforto. I know Conforto will eventually sign, but you know you just don't know who. So that's a big wild card as to whether his stock will go up or down. His his uh, minors, his minor leaguers, his prospects. I really like. Uh, I like all four of those. Those are great. Those are great picks. And then yeah, his pitching is. Uh, it's pretty weak there with just Max Freed. Um, that means somebody somewhere probably has a strong uh, starting pitching. Uh, what do you call it? Strong pitching keepers, yeah. and uh, and he doesn't. So he's gonna he's gonna have he's gonna have a hard time drafting a pitching uh, a pitching rotation that's worthwhile. Well, on the bright side, uh, most of his outfield is completed and he only needs to look for a second and, and third base along with all these other uh, utility spots, uh, all these extra hitting spots. So maybe he can concentrate on pitching. So mm-hmm. Max Fried and Grayson Rodriguez go carry over to 2022. I, You guys know me. I do love me some Grayson Rodriguez this upcoming season. So, uh, Sean, are we okay to just move on since there's yeah, only two pitchers? Yeah. Right, let's go. Yeah. Who's next on this docket? Matthew Whelan. Okay, so let's talk to our chef here. Uh, mm-hmm. Come, he's known, He is known as Comeback Citizen. <laughs> come back season. It's funny because he's a cook. It would be comeback seasoning. Oh, come, uh, Matthew, <laughs> I, make sure we got to. I got to tag him. <laughs> uh, so you're seeing his team right there. Uh, let's see, what do we call it? So this is Matthew. If I oh, there he is. Tag Freddie Freeman, the new Dodgers player, along with Wander Franco and Josh Young. Uh, uh, Sean, let's start with you. Uh, what stands out to you the most here? Uh, on the on the hitters, I mean, Josh Young's going to be out for probably the year. Freddie Freeman and Wander Franco are easy keeps. His, his pitching. Th- th- this is a awesome. Was just talking about some teams are going to have really strong pitching keepers. This is one of them right here. Yeah, what's wrong with Josh Young? Oh, I see. Labrum he, surgery. He went, yeah. under, he went under labrum surgery. That's why when I when I ranked him in the prospects, I didn't rank him as high as as other people had him because I was reading up on his injury and he's he's going to be out for quite a while. So. All right, and there you are. Walker Bueller, Jacob DeGrom, Ranger Suarez, uh, Tristan McKenzie, Shane Baz, Reed Detmers, Tyler Gilbert, Chris Rodriguez. He obviously took advantage of the new rules that you don't longer have to be under 25 years old to be a minor leaguer. You could just either be in the minors or not have enough uh, at-bats or innings pitched. So he took full advantage of that. He went from having two minor leaguers to having, uh, what is it, all five now. He has completed mm-hmm. the the thing there. So... Uh, <laughs> The thing, the, the five he completed minor the slots. thing. <laughs> I'm running out of that words here. Great, great podcasting. The thing. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, can anybody explain to me why he kept Ranger Suarez though? Uh, Ranger Suarez was actually really good down the stretch. Yeah. Um, it, it's more of a risky thing. I think his hitting was a little weak. So, uh, yeah. I mean, Ranger Suarez isn't my favorite, but he was good down the stretch last year. So maybe he's hoping for a lot of wins with that uh, lineup now. All right. Who's next on the docket here? At it's going to be Aaron. Oops. No, 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 no. I don't want to be commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Seriously. I don't want to be commissioner anymore. Too much work. It's like a second <laughs> job here. Chicks stick the long words. So, so obviously she, uh, she is riding the Salvador Perez train all the way to, uh, well, it's a two catcher league. So, you know, one catcher down. Now she needs one more whatever. Eloy Jimenez and Brian Reynolds are her outfielders, along with Vidal Brujan, Tristan Casas, Nick Gonzalez, and Orelvis Martinez as her minor leaguers. So she kind of lacks a little bit of hitting in terms of the infield, but she is, uh, she is uh, what do you call it, uh, well-stocked with infield prospects. Austin, uh, give me one player you are looking forward to on this team. 
Brian Reynolds is underrated. I think they've been saying it for years (laughs) fantasy. He is very, very underrated. I think his fantasy stock should be higher than a lot of people are giving him credit for. Um, I mean, he's just because he's on the pirates doesn't mean he sucks. Um, You know, he's, he's got the average. He he'll give you a good 25, 30 home runs. Um, You know, he will steal a handful of bases. He's got the OBP. I really think that Brian Reynolds was a great, great keep. Um, I think Brian Reynolds is very, very underrated. I would put him maybe even close to the, I don't even remember. Uh, let's see, where, where did I rank him in terms of the outfield? In terms of the outfielders, I put him at, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's third base. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth. I have him ninth. Um, right smack dab in the middle between Castellanos and a Rosarena. Um, oh, so that's for total outfielders. That's for total. Outfielders. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Um, so I think in my opinion, he's the ninth best, uh, he's the ninth best mm-hmm. outfielder in terms of fantasy. Um, I great. believe total outfielders is another podcast. What is this? It? Really? This is total bases. Total. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Let's go on to the pitches here really quick. Uh, Mike oh. Clevenger, Brandon Woodruff, Josh Hader, Quinn Priester. I love, I mean, she drafted Mike Clevenger last year, and she's like, oh, oh, I only drafted him because uh, I'm going to keep him for next year. And I kind of roll my eyes at that and say, okay, Aaron, whatever you say. Hey, she but stuck you know to her what? guns. She, she stuck to her guns. stuck to her word. She is a woman of her word. She's going to go come in with Mike Clevenger as uh, as uh, one of her starting pitchers. And uh, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all. And then Quinn Priester waiting in the wings as well, which I'm a big fan of. I'm, I'm not a big, big fan. But I just want to – it's a guy that I've been uh, kind of keeping an eye on for the last couple of years. Uh, in the minors, so it's not all hope is not lost with the Pirates. Although I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they're going to ruin him somehow. Uh, <laughs> Mike, but uh, buy or sell Mike Clevenger uh, having uh, same production that he had when he was with the Guardians. There, Sean. Oh, uh, that I'm I I I'll push. Uh, I just don't push. think with the lineup being kind of how it is, and he's going to be on an innings limit. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to push. I, I, I don't want to buy. I don't want to sell. I just want to move along to the next guy. All right. Let's move along to the next guy. Andrew. O. Andrew. O. Andrew. What's his name? Big Dinger Energy right here. Yep. You are. Uh, I'm almost memorizing these uh, names again. Another Mets fan. Another Mets picture. And that's what Pete Alonzo, I think. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. That's Talk the about polar bear. Dad bought at the age of 24. God damn. Seven. All right. 27. Oh, okay. Well, that's a little bit more acceptable. <laughs> but yeah, bring back steroids. I want my players to look like they're uh, superheroes, Marvel superheroes. Right? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh, your body shaming Pete Alonso. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Mets fans. Anyway, who are we talking? Oh, Andrew. Uh, I got to make sure you can tag him. But there's Matt Olson, <sighs> Ketel Marte. I think this is a team that I always say that kind of looks like my uh, points league team. Because I have Matt Olson and Ketel Marte on my team. Bo Bichette, uh, I have Bo Bichette on my team too. Yeah, this is it right here. Alex Bregman. Hey, listen, this team looks a lot better without Nolan Arenado. I'll tell you that much right now. This is a much better looking team than last year's keepers when we were bashing him for keeping both Alex Bregman and Nolan and Arenado. And then uh, his hitting prospects, Sam Huff, Jordan Groshans, Alec Thomas, and JJ Blade. Austin, let's start with you. Name me one player you want to look forward to this upcoming season from this list. Uh, I think Alec Thomas actually is going to be a pretty decent little outfielder or little outfielder there. Um, he's playing in Arizona. So, you know, Arizona is going to look like garbage. So he'll probably uh, he'll probably get some pretty good playing time um, in terms of outfielders. I think I actually ranked him pretty, pretty high. I think I have him in the second tier when it comes to outfielders. Um, you know, I think, oh, no. Yep, there he is. He's uh, I got him right in between Connor Joe and Will Myers. Um, so I think that, uh, Alex, uh, Alec Thomas is going to be a good, uh, minor league acquisition. Um, that was, that was a good keep for him. Um, and then, yeah, if he had Nolan Arenado with the, with the hitting that he has, um, I'm glad he got rid of him. Uh, I kept Nolan Arenado in, in the Mardi Gras league, but that's because I didn't have much else. So, you know, <laughs> uh, Alec Thomas, good, good keep. And then moving to the pitchers, just two Sandy Alcantara, Luis Castillo. That's not too bad, right, Sean? No, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good place to start from. I did just want to add one piece to Alec Thomas. He's already led off and, you know, started and led off, and I believe two out of the three or three out of the four Arizona Diamondbacks spring games. 
he might be a guy that they try and, you know, manipulate the service time, wait two weeks, because I don't think he's a first or second place finish and rookie of the year type of player. But uh, I definitely do think he's going to get a lot of playing time this year. All right. Who's next? Uh, Mike Harvey. Mike from Washington, known as Molina Applebaum, which I believe that's still uh, a Tribe Called Quest reference. So there it is. And that's a solid team there. Austin, uh, I got to do some things here. Can you uh, name off the players that you see on your screen there? Uh, yeah. So who is this? This is, uh, this um, is Mike, Harvey. Mike Harvey. Yeah. Uh, I got to tag Mike, him too. Mike, Mike Harvey. Uh, let's see. His hitters are uh, Trey Turner, Ozzy Albies, Whit Merrifield, Mitch Haniger, And then in his, uh, in his, I, I'll, I'll let you know his pitchers. His pitchers are Garrett Cole and a Roldis Chapman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then in his, his minor leaguers, he has uh, St. Louis prospect Nolan Gorman and San Diego uh, shortstop prospect CJ Abrams. Uh, Sean, what do you think of some of these keepers he's got? Uh, I personally probably want to keep with Merrifield. Uh, on the other side, his pitching keepers are very good. I like them. Both uh, George Kirby and Matt Libertor. But uh, overall, I mean, Trey Turner, Ozzy Albies is a hell of a start in a categories league. Uh, yeah. Both of those guys give you good production in both home runs, stolen bases, runs, RBIs. And of course, Trey Turner, I, I think, could score like 130 plus this year, honestly, with Freddie Freeman behind him. Yeah. Um, Mitch Hanniger uh, is kind of a, an iffy pick for me. I'm not sure where he's exactly going to fit into that Seattle lineup. Uh, it looks a little busy out there, but he is coming off a season where he had, you know, 30 plus home runs. Um, I'll pull it up. Actually, how many he had, he had 39 home runs. He almost, almost had 40, but uh, interesting. Probably won't be kept next year. I, I doubt doubtfully, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about CJ Abrams, chance of uh, making some sort of dent now that uh, short, now that shortstop is pretty much open there. Uh, yeah. With- I think they would be doing CJ Abrams a massive disservice if they rushed him up simply because Tatis won't be ready. Um, I honestly think we'll see Machado at shortstop for a good bit. And I, I think that's just the easiest way for them to fill up shortstop. And then they have a couple of people they can put at third base. So uh, yeah, CJ Abrams, uh, I know that's probably a, like the sexy name to pick, but uh, I, I just don't, it would do him a disservice to do it. Yeah. And then uh, Nolan Gorman, I'm not quite sure what to think of Nolan Gorman because he's, he's valued pretty well, but you know, he's, he's got, uh, Nolan Arenado in the way. So he's not going to be having very much playing time because he's got Nolan Arenado in the way. He's he been playing base. a lot of second base in the minors. Uh, he, uh, it, if, when he comes up, he's probably going to be playing second well, that, base. That's Tommy Edmond, isn't it? Uh, uh, Edmonds at short. Oh. And, and, and they can play all over the place, anyway. yeah. And they got yeah. Edmundo Sosa as well. I mean, that the Cardinals are known to just, you know, have their players be like uh, wild card jokers kind of things. You know, they're, they're easily replaceable. So don't worry. I mean, look at their outfield. Their outfield has always changed. Oh, another pick off the board. Wait, wait, wait hold on. I want to do some pop and circumstance <laughs> with this. All right. But that, that, that was the Cardinals thing. And then let's move on to the pitchers. Gary, I think was Sean mentioned it already. Gary Cole, Errolis Chapman, George Kirby, Matt Libertor. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on Matt Liber, Libertor there. Uh, I might even, I'm butchering his name. I'm pretty sure. Sean, but what do you think about Matt Libertor? I, I, I don't know. I feel like he's been, We've been waiting on him for a while, uh, but yeah, it's really right. only been, I mean, he got traded in 20 at the end of 2019 before the short in 2020 season. He didn't pitch at all in 2020, spent all year at triple A. He actually threw a, a hun, almost 125 innings at triple A um, had a, what was his strike K percentage about 24%, but under a K, well, K per inning. Um, I feel like at this point, just keeping him in triple A is going to do a disservice to him. They, they just need to get him up into the majors and see what he does. All um, right. And Let's... Adley Rutschman are the two that I'm like kind of leery on. And the reason for both of them is because they've been in the minor leagues for so long. Why? <laughs> you know, and that, that's what I want to know. So, yeah. Um, I just figured it was a service time issue. But let's get to that third pick. With the third pick overall, James Handeboat getting my sloppy seconds. Selects starting pitcher Kevin Gossman, pitcher from the Toronto Blue Jays. Wow. Uh, I honestly didn't think Kevin Gossman was going to go that early, but uh, all me, I blame myself. I've been hyping Kevin Gossman a lot in this, uh, in this podcast for the last three years. 
And now that he's going to the Blue Jays, now everybody wants to be a part of the, the whole Kevin Gossman train that I've been driving. But I, 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 I'm I glad that he got it, so I don't have to pick him this year. I don't trust him with the Blue Jays this year. So good luck to James <laughs> and Kevin Gossman. Um, as, uh, hey, listen, man, the, if, you go, if you're a pitcher and you go to the Giants and you're going to pitch in that mammoth of a ballpark, it could do wonders for your career. So just think about that next time you want to sign with a team. Um, but other than that, I think, Sean, you don't like that pick either, I'm assuming. I, I'm actually, you know, I was thinking about it if he got all the way back to the the turn. I was thinking about it because my only pitchers right now are Freddie Peralta and Shohei Otani, and Otani's probably going to be more of a util guy for me anyway. So, Is this uh, a weekly league? Yeah, it's weekly. No, this – oh, wait, your league or – well, well, bi-weekly. It's bi-weekly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Monday and Thursday is one game. Friday and Sunday is the next game. So, all right, that means Matthew is on the clock. Matthew, pick your pick. Comeback season. I, I, I think he said he was going to be a little busy today, both him and Aaron. So, we'll see whenever he gets a chance. I don't know, man. Get fired. This is the more important. Let's go. <laughs> But he's in a fireless kitchen, or at least he said he was. I'm, I'm not sure if he went to a new place, but he said he was in a fireless kitchen. And I was like, that's like a liquorless bar. <laughs> liquorless bar. Well, speaking of liquorless, Jacob, I don't know if he drinks or not. I'm just joking. But Jacob <laughs> Moses now, another Mets fan. Who, who's his? Oh, it's just a plain Mets cap. I was hoping for a picture. But yeah, he kept Pete Alonzo, Manny Machado, Bryce Harper, Ronald Acuna Jr., and Brett Beatty. Uh, let's start with uh, Austin here. Uh, any concern or anything that you want to talk about here? Pick one player, please. Pete Alonzo. Uh, okay. Pete Alonzo, a lot of power. This, this, this lineup's already going to have a lot of power. Um, Pete Alonzo, I think the one is that I'm the most leery of. I think, I think I said this a couple, couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't know what Pete Alonzo I'm going to get, you know, am I going to get the 41 Homer Pete Alonzo or, you know, he's, he's the most, inconsistent out of these out of these four um but i mean pete alonzo where did i end up ranking him in the uh in the first base uh, first baseman um let's see i i have him top five still I, I have him one two three four five i have him fifth so i mean he's top five first baseman lots of power um yeah he's gonna be smashing that home run category i think with with these hitters he, he was the same way last year with his team, Jacob was. Uh, I just want to say, and I'm going to have to disagree with the assessment. Uh, this is a guy, Pete Alonzo, who rookie year obviously hit 53 home runs. That probably wasn't going to happen again. In 2020, he was on pace for 39 home runs. He had 16 in the shortened season. And then in 2021, he had 37 home runs. Since his debut, he's still the major league lead home run leader. And the most impressive part of what Alonzo did in 2021 was his strikeout percentage through the years, rookie year, 26.4, 2020, 25.5, 2021, 19.9. Of all the hitters, I think there were 17 or 19 of them that hit at least 35 home runs. Pete Alonso had the fourth lowest strikeout percentage. And the guys behind him were like Jose Ramirez, uh, Nolan Arenado. And, you you know, the guys that all always have been high contact percentage guys with power. Um, he finished, you know, with a better strikeout percentage than guys like Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber. So I, I'm not really all that worried. I think he's the most safe player to hit 40 home runs. And in that lineup with Nimmo, possibly Starling Marte, if he ever gets healthy, Francisco Lindor in front of him, I think he he could be a guy that could possibly win the RBI title in uh, the National League. All right, let's move on to the pitchers. Logan Webb, who uh, was a kind of a – Kind of a breakout year for him, huh? Mm-hmm. And then Zach Wheeler, who's uh, solidifying uh, his role as an elite pitcher. What's that red flag? Shoulder yeah, day-to-day. He'll be yeah, fine. She, uh, he's probably not going to make opening day start. Uh, he might get pushed back a week. They might not even put him on the IL. But he, uh, Joe Girardi said he's already not making the opening day start. Oh, that's a shame. So Aaron Nola time. Okay. Uh, and then Matt Allen is the minor leaguer who's also recovering from Tommy John, if I remember correctly. Is that the well, case? Well, he had Tommy John this time last year. Okay. Um, he had uh ulnar nerve transposition surgery, which several Tommy John guys get after like they recover from it. Um, but Matt Allen, in terms of this league, you know, we reset in two years. I don't think Matt Allen's gonna debut in the next two years, but you know, you never know. All right. Well, I was excited to I I was gonna do my uh my whole like mm, Jacob Moses oh. is up next. So I was gonna we, we got another pick. 
All right, bear with me here. Oh, he did make a pick. Cool. But yeah, uh, this isn't too bad. This is a good starting point. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. So good for Jacob for uh, um, doing his keepers. Uh, let's oh, move I, over. I, lo- to- I love his lineup. I, I loved yeah. it last year. I love it this year. Yeah, but he's just, I don't know, man. Pitching's always been a problem with him. So we'll see if he uh, bounces back this, this year. But this Go was on. Jacob Moses' lineup? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I'm I'm in another league with Jacob, um, and <laughs> I I won that league last year, and oh. and uh, he uh, I don't even remember what we got to talking about. That we were in a big group chat, and uh, and he called me a bum. He was like, "You bum ass," and I'm like, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it was. So he, w- we were in there. We're trying to find another person to play. And Jacob goes, well, I'll play. And we're like, Jacob, you're already in the league. And, he's like, oh, crap. and so I put in there, I said, that's all right. I don't mind beating Jacob's ass twice. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, bum ass. And I'm like, I know you ain't talking to the champion of the league. Right. So he oh, put I in love a, this. He, he fight, put fight, in, fight, smoke. fight. He put in a voice memo. He's like, man, I'll give a shit who you are. Don't you, you get your ass out of here. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was awesome. Oh, I man. haven't gotten a, I haven't gotten a trash talk for fantasy. So now that I'm, now that I was the champion, I get to trash talk a little bit so well here we go with the fourth pick in the 2022 i almost said 21 2022 baseball life league matthew wheeling chef matthew wheeling selects robbie ray of the seattle mariners robbie ray so we're seeing a trend here sean three pitchers fourth pick (laughs) starting pitchers i want to say Uh, that was the same way last year too so i was i don't remember yeah uh, all I know is that I got Vladimir Guerrero and Rafael Devers back to back. So, <laughs> uh, so listen here, man. Uh, three of these pitchers are in my top 16. I got Robbie Ray, Aaron Nola at number nine, number 10. And then uh, number 16 is Kevin Gossman. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the trend now I see. So we'll s- And then, I, of course, the only hitter was Anthony Rendon. And that was kind of a questionable thing. Hey, listen, if Anthony Rendon can stay healthy, more power to Jet and his team. But who else was available? I mean, you had Austin Riley, Justin Turner, Nolan Arado, Yohan Moncada, Brian Hayes. A lot of good third basemen out there. Uh, so he must think that Rendon is going to be an elite third baseman again, which is always possible, but he yeah. just can't stay healthy. All right, this is Leon's team up here. He's a big Washington Nationals fan. Josh Bell, who I really like for this upcoming season. And then Dansby Swanson. So, uh, Marcus Simeon, who I really like. And then Tyler O'Neill. Yeah, I like I like O'Neill. I think he's a uh, like he's a, the risk I'm willing to take. I guess not as a keeper though, but that's just me. Uh, Abraham Gutierrez, who I have no idea who that is. So, Sean, shed me some light on this guy. Uh, un- unknown, unknown. Gutierrez. Yeah, I, I I don't know. All right, he um, I'm looking at low. Like I'm looking at low A uh, catcher. That's all I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, Dan, does he even have a Fangraphs uh, report card there, or what? What's going on? Uh, I, I do not. I'm looking on his just the, his fan tracks news. He played in Low A Bradenson, uh, appeared in 18 games after he was traded from the Phillies to the Pirates at the end of July. What trade did they make between the Phillies and the Pirates? Damn, he's the 33rd best prospect for the Pirates. <laughs> Why does he do this to himself? Uh, I, I don't on? know. I don't know. Maybe he knows something we don't. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, he has a decent hit tool ceiling, but he still is a work in progress. The power is missing. There is no speed, and he's a 40 future value. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to keep 40 future value catchers now. Hold. Hey, it is a two catcher league. So maybe that's <laughs> it is a two catcher. When in doubt, just say that. Yeah, right? There you go. Uh, the pitchers this is a short, short and sweet Shane Bieber, Max Scherzer, and Kate Cavalli, who I'm good excited picks. to see. Yeah, I, I like all those. Those are good picks. All right. So that's that. Uh, who's next? I forget. Are, are we in the championship rounds? It's, oh, this is uh, the championship Henry. round. It's Henry. Henry, our third, our uh, fourth place winner last year. Yeah, you know, good for Henry, man. He struggled to uh, up most of the season last year, but he made it to the final four. And this is the team he's bringing back. Uh, his favorite uh, Houston, you know, he's a big Houston Astros fan, so he had to keep <laughs> Carlos Correa, and he's a big Mets fan as well, so he had to keep Matt Francisco Lindor. <laughs> no, he's a Yankee fan, so it must be hurting him to have. No, I'm just joking. I don't want to. I don't want to poke the bear too much. Cedric Mullins <laughs> is the other center fielder. Giancarlo Stanton. So that's a hell of a lineup there, along with Joey Bart, Atley Rushman, which I have to say. Two catcher league. Two catcher league. <laughs> very impressed at this strategy. It, it's a hell of a strategy, but it's you could do a lot worse at catcher at this point, assuming that these two guys actually play. So, yeah, he's going to be looking for more minor leaguers if, if they get called up sooner rather than later. Uh, awesome. What do you think about King Henry's um, 
hitting lineup so far. I want to know how the hell he got both. How did he get both Joey Bart and Adley Rutschman? Um, Minor league slots, man. Yeah. yeah, those are, those are, those are, that's a very interesting strategy. He doesn't have a catcher. Not uh, yet. Not I mean, we're, we're, we're drafting. So. Oh, okay. so we'll see what he goes. But I mean, if Adley Rushman gets called out sooner rather than later. I mean, he's out, Joey... for two to, he's out for two to three weeks, though. Well, and then and then the Giants are short Buster Posey. So you would have to assume that Joey Bart's going to play this year. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Uh, I know oh. he's last I checked. It, it, you could... In a platoon with Kurt Casale is the plan. Oh, that's still the plan. All right. Yeah. Well, either way, I mean, the, the Correa pick's good. I like the Correa pick. The Lindor pick is good. I think he's going to have a bounce back season. Uh, he just hit a home run yesterday. I uh, I saw a video where uh, he tried to give a fan a ball. He opened the gate. Oh yeah, I, I saw that as oh, well. Yeah. He opened cool. the gate back there, tried to throw it. It landed in the tunnel. He ran out there. He ran out into the tunnel, gave the fan the ball, came back and crushed a homer. Yeah. So you know that was that was pretty cool. And then uh, Mullins. I'm a, I'm pretty optimistic for Mullins to have a to have a good season. I don't see a sophomore slump for for Mullins, especially the fact that he's in Baltimore, um, Camden Yard. So Stanton, I'm a, I I think that was a little bit of a homework pick, but he also has the the power and he stayed on the field last year. So you know, hopefully uh, he stays on the field this year and uh, proves me wrong because I've always liked Stanton. Um, but you know, I feel like that was a little bit of a homer keeper pick, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, Joey Bart, Adley Rutschman, very interesting strategy that I think will pay off. One of the two of them, you know, will, will be pretty decent anyway. I've got a couple of comments to read here. Uh, Andrew says that, uh, he thinks that Henry traded him Tanner hook for Joey Bart last season. And, uh, it's official. It looks like Matthew will be changing his name from comeback season to comeback seasoning. Cause you know, he's a chef. So there I am excited for that. Love it. Uh, he, these are his uh, two pitchers, Jack Flaherty and Trevor Rogers. Um, Flaherty's hurt, right? No, he, he, he was, he's healthy now, I believe. Okay. But he, you know, he was hurt most of last year. Oh, uh, actually, it no, you're right. He, he did just receive a PRP injection, Ooh. uh, on Friday. Um, so that's shut down for two weeks. Oof. He, he'd be really good if he was not hurt. <laughs> All righty. Well, other than that, I mean, yeah, it would be, these would be good picks if he wasn't hurt. But assuming he, that they're healthy, uh, it is another solid starting rotation. Uh, but obviously now he has to build for that death because of uh, the injuries, especially with Trevor Rogers. I don't know what Trevor Rogers. I, I like Trevor Rogers. I don't know if I uh, like him enough to be a keeper. Oh, I, I would have kept Trevor Rogers. I don't if know he was about fine. that. But I mean, I do as a as a third or fourth starting pitcher on my team. Absolutely. Uh, I like to keep things safe with my rotation. Okay, now we go to the guy with the best keepers. Yeah. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I think well, so. He's yeah. talking about um oh the, the, and Aaron knows that she's on the clock, right? I know that she's yes. working today. Yes. Okay. All right. So with that being said, these are my keepers. I am the last year's runner up. I lost to Sean last year, so I get to pick in front of him this year, which you know, I, I noticed on that every freaking year we're picking right next to each other. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it is odd, isn't it? <laughs> well, the first year that was random, right? That was a freak accident. But then the next year, since we both uh, finished uh, uh, second and third, third and, no, third and third fourth, and fourth, that's, yeah, third that's and fourth respectively, you got to pick in front of me and got vengeance on me for picking all your players. <laughs> and I still got the players I wanted anyway. <laughs> and then this year, I'm going to have a lot of fun sniping the players that you want because that's all I do with you. But Vladimir Guerrero Jr., last year's what, what should have been last year's MVP. But people, this is what happens when people do narrative uh, analysis when they do these evaluations for MVP votes. They fall for these uh, bullshit narratives. So oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Rafael Devers is my third baseman, uh, young, uh, young hitter for the uh, Boston Red Sox. Luis Robert, of course, White Sox. I got to do my White Sox players after know, being traded after being traded early in the year uh, from me to you. Yeah, for Because remember, Cullen. I, I oh, had like... all the White Sox guys after last year's draft. Oh, you did? I, 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 I had Robert. I think I had Moncada. Uh, oh, yeah, I had, I had somebody else, too. I, I had one of the pitchers, I think. But, yeah, I had all the White Sox last year. And, and then... I traded Robert, and it was maybe Ro- – or basically Robert and Kalenic. And uh, that trade no. did not work out for me. No, I, it's more than that. Robert and Austin Martin – Oh, Austin Martin. Did, did you keep him, though? Yeah, you kept him. Okay, yeah, He's right there. Austin Martin, one of my minor leaguers. Thank you very much. That's and then uh, I gave you um, 
Jerry Kalanick and Nick Senzel. I'm like, oh, you really want to do this with me, Sean? Yeah, man. I, I, <laughs> I was, I was so team. excited for it. Wow, and then that, Luis, really Luis Robert, excited trade. Well, when it's funny because Luis Robert got hurt like right after it too. Yeah. And much. I was like, this is even better. And then Kalanick came up and it just, it, he, he didn't work out, but you know. Uh, and, and I kept on winning uh, Austin, just so you know. I mean, I, I, and, my team was and, and I, and I, and I won the championship, so. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> and, and without Jared Klein, I think you eventually dropped Jared Klein. No, so, he, yeah. he was on my roster all year. Ah, that's even better. And of course, I got uh, I, I don't remember if Juan Soto won NL MVP last year or not. Uh, did he? I forget who. Won no, MVP. it was uh, you know, why I don't remember because it doesn't freaking matter. Juan Soto should have won NL MVP last year. God damn it. <laughs> no, all who, of your players should have won NL MVP. Yeah, Rafael Devers, uh, co MVP, Luis Rubert, co MVP, Trike MVP. Well, no, it was, seriously, who won MVP oh, it was, last it was, year? It was, it was Harper, it was Harper. Harper, yeah, Juan Soto right. should have won last year. No, they were like they were the same. Their numbers were very similar. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's not Juan Soto <laughs> likely. Uh, Royce Lewis, Austin Martin, Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, also, so Austin, this is what a real team looks like. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think about what a real team Damn. looks like? What, what do you think of my hitters so far? Uh, pretty good hitters. I, I mean, I again, I'm like, how the hell did you get Juan Soto, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and Rafael Devers on the same team? So well, smart Vla- everybody, man. Everybody's Vlad wasn't checkers, kept. Man. Vlad wasn't kept after 2020. Oh, yeah, and I believe Aaron had a chance to draft him, and, and she, she did it. Yep, I, I remember amazing. that, and that was what got because you got him in, I think, the second round, something like that. I yeah. forget. Yeah, uh, but, the, your mind, the minor leaguer I'm most excited to see is Bobby Witt Jr. Um, absolutely, for sure, uh, definitely. I think he's going to be. Um, He's going to produce pretty well when it comes to fantasy. Uh, I ranked him pretty high. Yeah, I don't, I don't even remember where, but I, no, I he, was, uh, he was up there. He was like top yeah. five or something. Yeah, he was up there. And then uh, uh, the, the one I'm, the one I'm kind of leery of is Royce Lewis. But again, former top prospect. Um, he's only 22 years old. Yeah, so still really young. He's still really young, so he could he could put it together. I think he's another one. I'm kind of like he's been. We've heard about him for a few years. Why is he not here? Uh, uh, injuries and tor- consistency. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think he was drafted out of high school too. Yep. So uh, no. that's what happens when you get drafted. So, but I think so was Bobby Witt Jr. Like he was drafted out of high school as well. So yeah. And like, just as, as a note on Bobby Witt, uh, he's been playing third base in spring training so far. And good. according to a report from the Kansas City Star, he is ex- viewed as their opening day third baseman with yep. Mondesi playing shortstop. All right, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's on my Short, team. And I, shortstop, I third base, corner infield, middle infield. I'll take both. <laughs> so, uh, if he could play second base, I'd be even better. <laughs> Center field. Bobby, Bobby Witt Jr., I have him ranked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth best second baseman. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteenth 10, 11, 12, 13th best third baseman. But I will say in the first few spring training games, he's been batting seventh or eighth in every game so far. Where do I have Bobby Witt? I think I have him way higher than you, Austin, there. Let me see. I'm just going to double check here uh, if my computer can just cooperate. Yeah, there we go. I mean, third base, now that I'm looking at it, probably rank him a little bit higher in third base. But second base or uh, shortstop, no, shortstop, I have him. Uh, I think I, I think I like where he's at. I have him right in between Trevor Story and Tim Anderson. I have him eighth. Uh, what do you have him again? I have him seventh, I think. Oh, okay, so you like him a little bit more than I do. But yeah, that does are my hitters. So hopefully they can. Uh, no, uh, I there's have him no ninth. Re- I'm sorry, I have him ninth. That's what I thought. Hopefully that there's no regression with these guys. I really love these guys. It's uh, you know what it is also, Sean. A lot of Latinos on this team. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the most important part. I have <laughs> the future of Major League Baseball on my team, and I couldn't be happier to make that championship run this year with these guys. And then my pitcher is Lucas Giolito, Liam Hendricks. I'm a big White Sox fan. I couldn't help myself. Don't mind the Cubs hat. We wear it backwards so people don't say anything. And then uh, I'm excited. I saw Hunter Green available last year. Like, really? Nobody's going to pick up Hunter Green. I'll, I guess I'll just have to do it myself. And then Max Meyer, because I didn't, I didn't know who else to uh, pick up last year on waivers. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Liam Hendricks, uh, I, I wasn't... <sighs> I don't know. I did. I, I wanted it to go with six hitters, but then I realized, you know, if I go that route, I, I I leave myself open to be very weak at pitcher, and I was already weak to begin with at pitch. That's what Austin. You asked me how, what happened to my team. That's what happened. My pitching staff kind of imploded on itself <laughs> last season, as uh, no matter who I put out there, they were just pitching wins. Champ- pitching wins championships. 
Well, good pitching wins championships. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it didn't matter. Like, I, I had really good pitchers, and they just weren't performing. Like I just, all right, well, this guy's not working. I'll put in this guy. He's been doing well the last couple of weeks, <laughs> and, and that's what happened at the end of the season, which uh, against Sean. So let's go to Sean's team now, and this is the championship uh, guy here, Mad Dog Magical. Are you still gonna keep that name, Sean? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, Jose Ramirez, Corey Seager, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, Shoei Otani. I mean, I mean, between Sean and I, the, the, we have got to be at the top of the list of uh, favorites to win this league, uh, just on hitters alone. And then he has Spencer Torkelson, Riley Green, so he's coveting all the Tigers prospects. Yep. And then Brennan Davis. Uh, so Austin, what sticks out to you as a uh, as an unbiased uh, by center there? Uh, let's see. Th- this, you said this is a bi weekly league. Yes. Yeah, so Monday, Thursday is one game, and then Friday, uh, Friday through Sunday is the next game. I just don't know in a weekly game. I don't know if in a weekly league if Otani is 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 worth it unless he's having an MVP season hitting. Because what 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 his draw is in fantasy is he's both a hitter and a pitcher. I feel like he's a better daily league player than he is a weekly league. Oh, player. for sure, for sure, uh, no doubt. So, but I mean, if you're going to get the offensive production, I mean, last year he had MVP offensive I mean, season. So he, he was the number one utility player in Roto. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, as long as he gets that again, that's going to be a great pick. I just, I'm very leery when it comes to Otani in a weekly league. Um, out a good power, definitely really good power. I like Kyle Tucker. Um, I believe Kyle Tucker for me is in the top five in outfielders is he top five? I, I, I mean he's consistently being drafted in the top 15 in most drafts i have him fifth right in between Mookie yeah. Betts and aaron judge um so yeah i like kyle tucker torkelson and green i'm high on both of those um you know they're young up and coming uh tigers tigers offense there i think that they're both going to be really good as long as they're hitting it in the gaps and not trying to hit too much out of the ballpark but as you can see they're both projected to hit uh, a good grip of home runs. Uh, Brennan Davis, we saw him in the Futures game last year. Um, he's poised to be pretty good. So, yeah, this is a good hitting lineup. I like it. And then the pitchers, Freddie Peralta. And, uh, you know, it's funny, uh, Matt Bushnell actually, I think you saw that, Sean, right? I, sh- I shared that with you, that Matt Bushnell was trying, in the uh, in the Mardi Gras League, he was trying to acquire uh, Freddie Peralta from me. It's like, all right, here you go, and give me your draft picks, and I get Jerry Klenick back. And I didn't keep <laughs> Jerry Klenick because I didn't care about him. Uh, but yeah, Freddie Peralta seems to be all the rage. And then you also have Edward Cabrera and Sixto Sanchez. So not only are you cornering the Detroit Tigers prospect uh, hitters, but you're also cornering the Miami Marlins uh, prospect pitchers. Yeah, so, I'm not sure how much long Sixto is going to sit there uh, yeah. hearing a lot of really bad things. Yeah, me too. Um, that, I'm yeah. regretting that I kept him for my minor league. Well, you had to. Well, it's awesome. yeah, I had you, to. You, you had to. I mean, I had to. It's a free pick. It's a free player. Just, just accept yeah. it. And, 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 and that's why want. I have them. <laughs> yeah, pretty. So yeah, it's the same strategy. So, yeah. uh, so this pitching staff looks a lot weaker, obviously, than last year. I mean, with Freddie Peralta, are you a little concerned there? Are you? Uh, you got some aces up your sleeve that you want to? Well, I, I believe it was last year uh, where I went the first seven picks without picking a pitcher, and I ended up having one of the better rotations in the league. Just because I, I cornered the market on guys like Freddie Peralta, Tyler Maley, Frankie Montas, um, trying to think of all the other guys I had, but and you know Otani pitched a little bit for me too, and it was just this year I think I'm going to go the opposite. I feel like I want to get seven straight pitchers, but being at the turn, I probably won't do like that. The yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it was you know I didn't have a, a bona fide ace. I mean, I, I get Peralta. Peralta was the best pitcher, and he only threw 144 innings. Um, but I, I'm definitely going with the, you know, kind of the quantity of quality. I, I don't want the best guys. I want a lot of the good guys. I don't want any like three great ones. I just want a lot of good ones. <laughs> yeah, because as we've seen, uh, even the great guys, um, they'll fizzle out uh, on you when you least expect it. So uh anyway that's and that's that those are the 12 teams in the baseball life league it's already we're already at the 90 minute mark i didn't realize uh and that was with me like trying to keep track of of the topics that we're talking about and putting a timestamp on them and we still couldn't uh, get through this in a timely manner as uh it was kind of a an ambitious project to do two leagues instead of just the one but yeah we're just gonna have to stop it right here you guys uh Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for those who uh, tuned in and listened. Uh, those 
and like I said, the, the draft is still ongoing. Aaron is on the clock. Uh, any last words from you, Sean? Nothing but uh, best wishes to my league mates. I hope that whenever I face you, I crush you and you eat my dust. <laughs> I disagree with that uh, sentiment. Uh, worst luck to everybody. <laughs> And even if you do have good luck, my team is going to crush you and make you eat my crumbs. So, well, well, no, you see, I want them to have good luck. That way, when I beat them, they don't have any excuses. <laughs> uh, don't worry, they'll, they'll come up with every excuse. <laughs> like, I don't, I, you, know, you know, that's the thing. You know, Austin and I, we're going to be doing a free league for all those people who have been on the baseball life waiting list for a while now. Uh, guys, no one's leaving anytime soon. All right. That's it. If anybody leaves, it'd be one guy. And still, so we decided to make a league for those people who have been patiently waiting and uh, it's a free league. And I don't want to hear excuses from that league either. Like, Oh, that I I just, I I went back to last year and I realized that was, I did have an ACE last year, but it wasn't a guy that was considered an ACE at the time. I had Robbie Ray and I got him like way, way towards the end. So you hear that awesome. That's why he won. Cause yeah, Robbie Ray. After. <laughs> that's yeah. it. And yeah, Robbie Ray's the most recent pick in the draft. That's right. Austin, last words from you. Um, I guess, you know, in the, uh, I'm playing in three leagues and I guess it's going to be the same. I can't wait to kick everybody's ass. Um, you know, let's, uh, I don't want to hear anybody crying that a third-year fantasy player kicked your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. I mean you know, well, it's just a free league, so who cares? All right, well, you agreed to be a part of it, and guess yeah, well, what? Well, I care. That's yeah. the thing. I, I care. care. I, I, I if, care. If, if, you're, if you're doing fantasy baseball, you're doing it because you want to compete, right? You're being competitive and all that. I don't want to hear excuses. I don't care if it's a free league or if you're paying 100 bucks to join in. I'm out there to win. I'm out there to crush the competition. I don't know. I just, I just, maybe I'm built different or maybe all three of us are built maybe different I'm here. So. Built. It's, it's so funny though. Cause when I first started playing, I was like, eh, I'll play. It's all right. Whatever. If I lose, I lose. I just hope I don't finish last. And now this year I'm like, I'm going to cross you. <laughs> like <laughs> I just like, I want to kick everybody's ass. So anyway, yeah. well, here we go again. Thanks to everybody. And uh, we will see you soon. Take care, everybody. See you later. See ya.